Hello and welcome to the Girl Fit Method podcast. I'm your host, Natasha Wakefield, and I am here to help you take charge of your health, get empowered, and ultimately become the best version of yourself. Let's go. Hello and welcome back to the Girl Fit Method podcast. I'm going to jump into today's podcast episode straight away and I'm going to be talking about a topic that I get asked about constantly and that is creatine. Should you be taking creatine? Does creatine make you gain weight? How much creatine should you take? What type of creatine? I'm going to answer every single question that you have regarding creatine today. This is all that you will need to know and hopefully by the end you'll figure out whether it's the right thing for you and whether you should be supplementing with it. Now before I jump into today's podcast episode, I'm going to be completely honest with you and a lot of fitness professionals, a lot of nutritionists won't. Now we look at girls that compete in things like bodybuilding and you know, their bodies are amazing. They, they sacrifice a lot. They train really hard and they're looking for a certain aesthetic. But there are a lot of girls that don't particularly want to have that type of aesthetic through lifting weights, right? And that's our biggest fear. We'll get quote unquote bulky. Now, if I'm going to be completely honest with you, the reason those girls end up looking like that is because they take creatine. Just kidding. I'm just kidding. Not at all. That is the question I get asked constantly. If I take creatine, will I get bulky? Will I look like I have huge muscles? And the truth is no, but creatine can help with muscle growth, but with a whole load of other things too. But it is not this magical substance that makes you just grow these huge ginormous muscles like you see these massive bodybuilders have. Okay, so what the heck is creatine? Creatine is a natural substance found in our bodies, mainly in our muscles, and it's an amino acid. So um, we find creatine in foods, mainly fish and meat. And this is why supplementing, if you're a vegan or vegetarian, it might be beneficial for you to supplement with creatine. So the way you want to think about creatine, if we break it down into really simple terms, is that it is a source of really quick energy for your cells, particularly in short bursts of activity. So if you're sprinting, um, any kind of activity where you need to exert energy really quickly, like CrossFit, but also lifting weights, because when you're lifting weights, you're performing an exercise quite quickly and then you're resting. So it's a spurt of energy. And so what uh, what creatine does, and I'm going to explain a little bit more about how that all works, but it essentially will really benefit you in that. So creatine comes from our body and it's stored in our muscles um, and our liver, kidney and pancreas produce it um, from three amino acids that we have. I said that we find it within foods as well, so mainly meat as well as fish and then we also supplement it and so they're the main three ways that we get creatine, obviously if you're not supplementing it, essentially your body's making it and then you're getting it from food. All right, so how does creatine work and why do we need it? Quick interruption. So if you want to win a $100 Gymshark voucher, I give one away per month to anyone that leaves a rating, review and subscribes to the podcast. All you need to do is take a screenshot of that rating, review, send it to me on Instagram at GirlFitMethod podcast Instagram page and you will go into the running. All right, back to the podcast. So like I spoke about, when you engage in really intense movement or sports, uh, your bu- your muscles require energy, right, for you to be able to perform and for you to exert yourself. So this energy comes from a molecule called ATP. Now, our muscles um, only store a small amount of ATP. And when you're doing these high intensity exercises or these movements, your body's using that for that physical activity, that intense activity. And essentially it's then kind of like depleted, right? So this is where creatine comes into play. So creatine is stored in the muscles as creatine phosphate. Um, When your ATP stores run really low, uh, your creatine phosphate donates its phosphate to ADP. This is sounding all a little bit confusing. But basically what then ends up happening is that um, that then converts to energy, right? So you exert that energy and then you are depleting that ATP. And this is where when we begin to supplement with creatine, we're able to 
um, provide your body with additional energy for you to be able to use when you need to exert yourself once again. So obviously then we know that creatine is going to be super helpful when it does come to exerting ourselves. Now, why is this really important? And if we zoom out and have a look at why this is important for you and how this actually can benefit you, even when it comes to your metabolism. So we know that the more muscle that you have on you, the better, right? Especially when it does come to supporting your metabolism. We know that muscle tissue is expensive, meaning your body requires more energy to have it on you. So you burn more calories just having more muscle on you, okay? Now, what creatine does is it allows you to perform really well, say in the gym when you're doing your, I don't know, three sets of 10, um, three sets of uh, 10 reps and we're going to do some squats, right? When we don't have that ATP available or, you know, we're not maximizing that, then what will happen is, is we're able to exert ourselves to a certain degree, but maybe not potentially where we could be. So where creatine helps is that if we are supplementing with creatine, we've got more of a likelihood to be able to exert ourselves better, to be able to lift more, to be able to perform an exercise better, to then therefore be able to build muscle. Uh, it also helps in that recovery process as well. So what we do is we train at the gym, we then get fatigued, right? Our body needs to recover so that we can then perform again. And so that it also helps in that process too. Now, um, side effects are another thing I wanted to touch on. So there's a lot of, uh, I mean, the main one I, we touched on earlier was around gaining weight and gaining muscle and looking really big. And I'm going to touch on that in a moment. Some people talk about having issues with um, their digestion when they take creatine. This is such a small percentage of people and it we do know that it can actually happen, but it's like such a minority. I don't actually know what the percentage would be, but that is a valid concern for some people, but such a small amount of the population. Now, when we take creatine, we're essentially storing more muscle, excuse me, more water within our cells, which will then mean that number on the scale is going to increase. But this has nothing to do with fat gain. So taking creatine won't actually make you even look bigger. This is not water retention in that, like it's a hormone that makes you retain water that makes you look really bloated, right? That's not what creatine does. The water that it holds is, is within your, uh, your cells and it's not visible. In fact, when that is nice and full, you'll actually find you've got more definition and tone rather than you looking fluffy and big. Psst. I just need to share a quick message with you all. So listen, if you are stuck under eating, over exercising and seeing no changes in your body and you are ready to make that change, head down to the show notes. We have an application form for our one-on-one -on -one coaching program that includes our three-phased coaching method that has helped women across the world find food freedom and improve the look of their body. All right, back to the podcast episode. So that's the first thing I want you to keep in mind is that when you do start to take creatine on a regular basis, and I want to talk about how much you should be taking and how often, you'll find the number on the scale will increase. But like I've talked about so many times, there are so many things that will impact what happens with your weight that have got nothing to do with you actually gaining any kind of fat, right? So the next thing I want to talk about is what kind of creatine you should be taking. There are so many different varieties in the market, but Creatine is the most researched supplement, I believe, alongside caffeine. And we know that creatine monohydrate is the one you want to take. Now, it doesn't matter what brand you take, as long as it's 100% uh, creatine monohydrate, they're literally all the same. And it just depends on how the company is marketing it. And um, if you look at the back of any kind of container that you're buying that is a creatine supplement, as long as it has 100% creatine monohydrate, you're good and you can go for it. That's the stuff that you want to take. The amount that you want to be taking is around about three to five grams daily. So we used to believe that you would load creatine, which meant you took a, a lot more creatine for a shorter period of time to be able to <clears throat> load your cells with creatine. <clears throat> but we now know that that's not necessarily needed. If you just take it on a daily basis, three to five grams a day, that will do the trick. And you'll start to see the benefits of creatine research shows us by about four to five weeks of taking it consistently. So should you be taking it? Absolutely. In fact, 
I would say that for majority of people, regardless of how many days a week you are training, it's so beneficial. There is so much research to show it's the safer supplement to take. In fact, it's researched more than protein powder is. So we know that it has scientific benefits that back it. The belief of gaining weight, which I know for the majority of you is probably the biggest concern, that has nothing to do with with gaining fat or even like this ability to build a whole lot of muscle. You still need to resistance train, you still need to push. Essentially, all it does is assist you in that process and also assist you in the process of recovering so that you can push yourself harder to be able to get better results. I hope that's cleared it up. If you have any more questions, please just slide into my DMs and let me know. Anyway, until next week, guys, big love, Coach Tash.